Hey, Jen. Hey, Stan. How are you? I'm very good. Yourself? All good. All good. <laughs> what are we here to talk about today, Jen? Security stuff, like how you protect or I see overall or API level. I think you, you, you prepare something, I think, and you can share this, this session, right? This episode. Yeah. So yeah, specifically, we wanted to create a little video on whitelisting IP addresses, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to access uh, your OIC endpoints. Yep. So as a bit of background, so you um, whitelist or allow list IP addresses yeah, to restrict yeah. the set of IP addresses that can submit a request to an OIC API. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously the advantage of doing this is that you limit the potential attack surface of your APIs Okay. Uh, to to the IPs that are present in your allow list. Okay, so do you need to introduce any other tool set, or you can do it from Oracle Cloud itself? You can do it from Oracle Cloud itself. Okay. And okay. There's a number of different options, um, you know, in which you can do this. So we can go over those options and discuss each one in a little bit more detail. Okay. I think just one thing that we need to mention is. Um, although whitelisting is a, is a good security practice, mm -hmm. um, you should know that some of your clients may not have fixed or static IP addresses. Mm -hmm. So it is not suitable for clients that are going to have a dynamic IP that keeps changing. Okay. Right? This is for, okay. for clients with a static IP. Yeah. Uh, okay, shall we get into um, these options, Jim? Okay, Jen, so let's go through the first of these options and we're gonna start off with the simplest one of all, which mm -hmm. is to just use OIC's network access policy. Oh. So if, for those of you that don't know, when you provision an OIC instance, um, you can actually define uh, access policy for that instance from the OCI console, which will limit the IP addresses that can access your OIC instance. Now that's a fundamental construct that we'll see in all of these options. Um, but in this particular case, we are just using that access policy as, uh, you know, our, uh, for our IP allow listing. And um, all you need to do in there is just specify the IPs that can access OIC. It's very simple. And again, it achieves the purpose of limiting your the attack surface of your OIC endpoints. Um, but there's a couple of limitations, Jim. So the first and most significant one is that the OIC network access policy has a limited number of IP addresses that it can support. Oh. Today, yeah, today that's 15. That could change in the future, but today that's 15. Uh -huh. And the other disadvantage is that you cannot limit using this approach at an API level or a path route level. Um, the, um, you know, it will apply to all of your OIC endpoints. Okay. Um, okay. So that's the first option that the customers have. Um, uh, shall we go to the second? Uh, okay, so Jim, the second option is, um, you know, to add an API gateway in front of your OIC instance. So in this particular case, the API gateway is sitting in a public subnet, so it's publicly routable um, and your clients can hit the gateway, um, you know, um, and then the gateway itself will have a backend route to your OIC endpoints. Mm -hmm. um, now, IP allow listing or whitelisting in this case is done at the um, uh, security list or network security group that is attached to that public subnet or mm -hmm. to that okay. resource if you're using network security. Group. So, um, so there you can define as many rules as you want. So mm -hmm. it bypasses the restriction of the OIC allow list. Um, and you can define however many IPs you want. So the um, limitation you talk about 15 IPs is not relevant here anymore? Not anymore, no. Okay, no. okay. that's good. Um, I, however, we do need to say that that um, OIC um, network allow policy is still active in this case. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it is only allowing access to OIC from uh, you know, either the, the VCN or the public subnet. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. oh, the door is only open to API Gateway in this case. Ex exactly. Uh, so okay. from, from the OIC perspective, all it's trying to do is ensure that, um, you know, the API Gateway cannot be bypassed. Um, got it, so got it, got it. You know, uh, 
yeah, making traffic go through it. Um, so there's a couple of advantages of this approach. One is obviously it achieves uh, what we set out to initially, but by adding a gateway in there, you can benefit from the ben from the things that the gateway brings. So things such as authentication, mm -hmm. rate limiting, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but the the second piece that's worth kind of uh, elaborating on is service abstraction, right? So if I have a gateway sitting in front of OIC, um, it gives me the flexibility to change my backend integration endpoints without affecting my clients. That's right. Well. Yep. Uh, and uh, that, that's an important thing. I think that's, that's actually quite nice to have. Um, from a disadvantage point of view, again, you cannot limit IPs based on a path route or an individual endpoint. Uh, and, um, you know, as a practice for every time you want to publish a, 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 an integration externally, you'll need to deploy to the gateway, which I think is a good okay. practice too. It, mm. it makes you think about, hey, I actually need to make this API public, so I do need to push okay, it. Okay, so for client, they they don't even know what's happening in integration cloud level. So because the endpoint from API gateway is all the time, same endpoint. Exactly. I could I could implement, you know, uh, the backend as a as a Python function, uh, and later I can change it to an OIC integration. Mm -hmm. My client would be completely abstracted from that. Okay. And I wouldn't break anything uh, with them. Yep. Okay, that's good. So yeah. So now we're going to show option three, which is a slight variation of this, um, and instead of an API gateway. In option three, we're actually going to use a uh, um, OCI load balancer. Mm. Okay. So, um, uh, so similar, similar from a flow point of view. Here we have a load balancer sitting in a public subnet. Um, you know, uh, uh, and uh, that load balancer will forward traffic to OIC. This is not at a path-based level at all, so yep. you don't need to deal with any, um, you know, um, experience around exposing OIC APIs as different uh -huh. routes. Uh -huh. Uh, this is at an instance level. It does actually mean, though, that you do need to set up, you know, OIC to have a vanity URL or custom mm -hmm. list name and use DNS uh, in front of this to actually um, route it to your, um, to your load balancer. But once this is set up, um, you know, you don't actually, from a maintenance point of view, it's less work because you don't need to publish anything anytime you want to expose a new API okay. or, okay. or automatically be routable by the load balance, if that is what you want. Um, uh, again, personally, I prefer to actually manually expose an API to be public. Mm -hmm. um, in this uh, approach, all of your OIC endpoints will be publicly okay. routable. Okay. Um, so uh, again, from a IP uh, allow listing po uh, point of view, uh, that is all done at the um, you know security list or the, the network security group level. Um, and there you can define as many as you want. The OIC um, uh, network allow list is just uh, ensuring the traffic traverses mm -hmm. the load balance. Yeah. Um, yes, and I, again, here you cannot route at a specific API level based on an IP address. Uh, it's applicable mm -hmm. to the whole instance. Okay, so looks like same principle, but Capability wise, compared to previous option, it's, it's a little bit different. So you, you're not like adding like rate limiting or something, something given by API gateway, not here at this point. Yeah, exactly. You don't get any of the benefits of having a gateway, mm. but you gain uh, in that there's less maintenance as far as, you know, needing to expose APIs Got it. Uh, Got it. out to the public. All right, and this brings us to the final option, uh, which is a bit of a combination of both. Um, okay. In my opinion, I think that this is probably the most flexible architecture that you can have, uh -huh. um, but let's kind of go through it. So first we have a load balancer sitting in a public subnet. Yep. We have a WAF policy attached to that load balancer. Uh -huh. That WAF policy now is responsible for handling the IP whitelisting requirement oh, okay. instead of the network uh, security groups or security list. Uh, and that adds a distinct advantage because we can do that through a WAF policy. We can now do it at a path yep. level, okay. which means that we can specify 
uh, a range of IPs that can access mm -hmm. an API. So we've mm -hmm. now addressed that requirement of, hey, I only want clients from this IP side out to be able to hit this API. Uh -huh. uh, and, okay. and that's exactly what WAP, this WAF policy does. Um, so, so that's a, a very important difference. Sounds there. like more fine, like grain control. It is, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because you can, yeah, you can do this now at an API level. Um, but also because we have a WAF policy there, you can benefit from other features of the WAF, right? So things oh, such for, as for for those who don't know about WAF, what is WAF? Uh, yeah, so web application firewall. Uh -huh. is what it is it has a bunch of um, access control policies that we can uh -huh. use uh, and um, you know uh, IP whitelisting is one of those policies okay um, yeah so some some of the other policies that the WAF gives us is the ability to rate limit the uh -huh. ability to do geofencing uh -huh. um, etc so if you do need that type of control over your APIs okay um, you can use the WAF there yep okay so, so then the load balancer will forward traffic to the API gateway. Um, the API gateway can still do what it does best, such as authentication, yep. right? It can then path route back to OIC endpoints. So from a network point of view, OIC is configured to only accept traffic from the API gateway. Mm, okay. The API yeah. gateway is configured to only accept traffic from the load balancer. <laughs> so it looks uh, like just adding the option two and three make it a better like protection to OIC. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit like Voltron. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, so let's kind of look at this from this point of view. Yeah. So from an API strategy point of view, if you're going down this path, number one, you can create private APIs for uh, that are only internal to the OIC instance. Got it, got it, yeah, internal. So these, these are either local invokes that you plan on doing um, mm -hmm. or scheduled integrations. Okay, okay. Basically APIs that you do not plan to expose publicly. Yep, understood. So they stay within your OIC instance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you might have uh, use cases where you need to make an API available uh, to your internal network. Okay. That could be an internal network within OCI, yep. or it could be, uh, you know, if you have VPN or Fast Connect set up to uh -huh. Uh -huh. the customer network that you have, which you can kind of see here by client C. In okay. that case, you can push those APIs to the private, to the API gateway sitting yep. in the private yep. server. Yep. And then you can still leverage the capabilities of the API gateway, right? Um, authentication, mm. rate limiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, for APIs that you do want to make publicly available, you would go a step further and then you would actually um, create a path route policy for them at the WAF, uh, which is at the load balancer level. And I would actually make those APIs publicly available. Um, and so um, you kind of have this layered approach, mm -hmm. but it also makes you think about, okay, um, I have an API that I need to make available. Where the, Who does it need to be made available to? And then okay. you can kind of go through this okay. layered cake approach. Yeah. I think this is really good because you know the public API is protected, and then the private API for the organization is protected as well. But there will be different measure of protection can be applied in different layer, and still OIC is the same backend. Ah. Exactly. I like it. I like it. And OCI provide all of this and. You don't need to go any anywhere else. You just use all the capability from OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and then maybe same engineer can do this at the same time and same place. Yeah, precisely. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think a lot of it is just about um, you know bringing that visibility to customers. Uh, a lot of the customers that we talk yep. to, uh, you know. Um, used to kind of having this capability all in one spot. It's just that in, in our world, in Oracle, we have these policies available across both mm. the gateway and the WAF. Um, so there's, yeah, there's kind of this approach that needs to be followed to leverage okay. Okay. both capabilities. Um, okay, so shall we do a quick demo of this option for Jin? Um, I think yeah. the other three are pretty, pretty simple. We can... Um, yeah, we can always cover them, um, you know, if we need to. But uh, right now, I have a simple demo set up where mm -hmm. I have a Hello World API from OIC. 
that I've exposed to my gateway and then from my gateway to my um, WAF policy at the load balancer. Okay. okay. Now with this Hello World API, I've configured it so that it can only be accessed by client A, mm -hmm. or cl I should say client A's IP mm -hmm. address. Um, and so if the request comes from client A, it will actually traverse through these three steps to my OIC integration and return a response. Mm -hmm. However, if the request comes from another IP address, mm -hmm. um, you'll see that the WAF policy will actually reject the request and oh, return, okay. return a 401. Um, I then have the flip side of that where I have another API. Uh, that one is a Formula One API. Um, that can only be accessed by client B, uh, yep. but not by client A. So okay. a very simple demo. Um, but let's kind of go through all of the components first, uh, in Jen, and maybe we'll start at the load balancer. So we'll start at the okay. front and we'll go backwards. So, so the OCI Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console you are showing. Yes. Okay. And specifically, I'm showing the load balancer within that. Okay. Uh, so I have a public load balancer. You can see the public IP address. Mm -hmm. um, and this load balancer carries a WAF policy, um, which it, is where... Uh, I've implemented this logic. Yep. Uh, so uh, just a couple of things I want to show here. So the load mm -hmm. balance is configured with a listener. The listener listens on um, 443. Yep. Um, and I've set that up with my SSL cert. Yep. Um, and uh, then, you know, once it gets traffic on 443, it's going to route it to this backend set called API Gateway. So it looks like you put your own like custom host name over there for. Yeah, correct. I, I yeah, I own this domain. I, I've imported my uh, certificate into. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Into this, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, if I go to the backend set mm -hmm. uh, and have a look at this API gateway backend set, you'll see that in here, um, this is set up to actually contain the private IP address of my. Oh. Okay. Of my API gateway. So the load balancer will route traffic to the private API. So this is the door to the second layer of API gateway you're talking about? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Uh, notice that this is also, uh, this traffic is also going via SSL. Mm -hmm. um, and we have another SSL set up here on the back end side. So we have a front end set and a back end set set up at the load balancer. Okay. Now, from a policy point of view, Jen, so here's the web application firewall policy that we've applied at the load balancer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've actually implemented some access control uh, policies here. Yeah. So if I go into them, you can see that for the Hello uh, World API, we've set up okay. a policy that says um, only allow traffic from this source IP um you know for this path oh, so okay. it's effectively limiting ip um uh, allow listing to uh, yeah. a, a path route and likewise for the formula one api we have uh, a different set of an ip or a, a different ip cider that will be mm -hmm. allowed for this mm -hmm. api right? mm, okay anything else uh if this two you know, if a policy is not true, it will just return a 401 and authorized response. So that's- uh, It looks yeah. like very simple expression protecting specific URI path and against to coming IP address information. Exactly. So in here, yeah. actually, if you add an access rule, yep. you can, um, ah, you okay. can define, um, you know, uh, you know, multiple conditions, uh, which is what we have. Yeah. Hmm. You know, based on you know pass and as you saw source IP, so we can do country region if you, yep, want, you yep. know after geo uh, fencing type yeah, stuff. We can okay. also restrict the request method, so we could say, mm -hmm. hey, I only want get requests to come through, okay. or or whatever, and that would just get stopped at the edge before it even hits your gateway. Okay. Okay. Um. That's cool. So. Yeah, so that's uh, some of what we've done at the WAF. Uh, as we talked about before, there's other things you can do. Uh, you know, you can set up uh, rate limiting policies in here as well. And we have one uh, for one of these APIs. You know, that we wow, return okay. a, yeah, the return the control for rate the flow coming yep. in. Mm. Yeah, so you can do this at the gateway as well, but mm. um, you know, you can just screen in this particular setup straight at the edge. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. 
So, uh, so we have that, and then there's other protection rules that can, you know that you can apply through the WAF if you need to. Oh, okay. Um, so, what is that? Is it, it's kind of like the malicious attack protect? Oh, yeah, that's why. Right. Looks like the SQL injection stuff and cross-site scripting. Oh. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of um, you know out of the box policies that WAF can it, break. It just needs to be enabled for this endpoint. Mm. Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, cool. So. Uh, so that's really what the front end piece looks like. So now if we go to the second layer, which is the gateway. Mm -hmm. So here's the private um, uh, API gateway, Jin. And in here I have um, really two deployments. Yep, so now um, we are in API gateway, yep. API gateway, hello world API, Formula mm -hmm. One API. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much identical from a deployment point of view. Uh, let me just go into one of these. Uh, so you can see here the Hello World API yep, have some yep. authentication based on a JWT okay. token yep. validation. Um, uh, in this particular case, I'm not doing rate limiting because I'm doing that at the uh, at the load balancer. Yep. And then this will route to an OIC endpoint on the back. Ah, end. Okay. Okay. Now in my particular case, I'm using um, IDCS as my uh, IDP, so yeah. I'm going to get a token from IDCS, and that's going to get passed through the gateway, and mm -hmm. OIC will validate. Well, the gateway will validate the JWT token anyway, mm -hmm. and then OIC will accept that token because it's mm -hmm. been issued by okay. its IDCS systems. Yeah. So, so that's what the gateway is doing. It's pretty simple. The only thing that you need to do is you need to expose your OIC APIs at the gateway um, that you okay. do want to make available. Uh, and then finally, if we go to the integration layer, so here's my OIC instance. Uh, and you can see I have a network access rule set up for it. And in my particular case, I have just two. Mm -hmm. I have one uh, access rule that says, hey, allow traffic to this instance from my private API gateway. No, oh, okay. Um, right. Um, and then I also have another rule to allow access to the instance from my machine so I can actually access the console mm -hmm. if I need to. Mm -hmm. So that's it from a setup point of view. Uh, so now, Jin, if I go into my uh, client, let me just grab a new token um, for these API calls. So you're getting access token for Oracle integration through the IDCS, Identity Cloud Service for Oracle. Yes, exactly. Got it. And so now I'm just going to... Um, I just got the token and then paste it over there and... Yeah, and now I'm going to hit the Hello World API. Mm -hmm. um, so just before I do, actually, you can see that my IP address is actually the one that we had configured at the WAF. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember for, that, yeah. Yeah, for this API. So this um, this actually should be allowed through. So it so, should have 200 and something. Mm. Okay. And, they, and there you go. So, so you now go. I'm actually getting a response. Um, now, if I try and hit the Formula One API, uh, yeah, the other API you set up, yeah. Yeah, so this should fail because um, I'm not, not on that IP address okay. oh, yeah. uh, side, yeah. all right? Yeah. So you can see that here. So uh, so that, that's IP whitelisting for the Hello World API. It did mm -hmm. exactly what we expected it to do. Um, now what I'm going to do, Jen, is I'm just going to change my IP. And the simplest okay. way yeah. the simplest way I can think of doing that is just to go into my company's VPN. Yeah. You just so, go into VPN and you should have different IP address then. Yep. So I'm just going to grab that and just connect. Almost there. There we go. Yep. So now if I refresh this page, my IP should have changed. There you go. So my IP is now different. So now if I go back to Postman and I try and hit the F1 API, mm -hmm. this is actually set up to allow access for me if I'm on the VPN, right? right. So, yeah. so in this particular case, I can just hit that. <clears throat> now I should actually get the response, which I do, right? Okay. So, so now it's allowing me through because I'm coming from the IP address it was expecting. Um, uh, wow, now if I go back to the Hello World API, this shouldn't work anymore because I'm no longer coming through this, the, mm. you know, the original IP address. Um, so this should give me a 401. Mm, awesome. Mm -hmm. There you go. So okay. So that that's a gen, just a simple 
demo that really just showcased the fact that um, you know we can uh, do IP um, allow listing mm. at the WAF layer for OIC based APIs. So just as a recap, there's a number of different options yep. um, that we presented today. Um, obviously, each option has a little bit more that we haven't talked about mm -hmm. as far as setup, but they, you know, they're all doable, and um, it really just depends on what customers are trying to achieve. In fact, one of the things that we want to cover, Jin, is you know, um, especially mm -hmm. around um, auth token validation. Yeah. Um, so that, that could be another video that we, we do in the future. Okay, okay. This is an awesome demo again. You, you're you doing very well, Stan. And I, I understood 101% today. <laughs> uh, it's, we're doing very well. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Sounds good, Jin. Okay, so bye to people today. Then bye, Stan. Bye, Jin. Bye, bye everyone.